After recording my line art tutorial, I got a lot of questions about this kind of blueprint effect. So I'm gonna do a quick tutorial to show you how to do that. This isn't a deep dive into the line art. So if you wanna see that, I'll post a link to that other tutorial in the description below. Here we'll be focusing on specifically this blueprint effect and how I achieved it. I'm gonna be using this free model here. So feel free to go here and check out the artists if you want to support them. But we'll be using this free model so that anybody can follow along. Let's get started. So here you can see I've imported one of those models from that pack and I've also set up a camera which you'll need as well. So what we're going to do is add a grease pencil line modifier to this. So I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to add a grease pencil object. We're gonna start with this stroke here so that we get those kind of materials on it. I'm gonna tab into edit mode there and I'm just gonna delete all those points so that we have nothing but this kind of empty stroke but we maintain all these materials. Now what I'm going to do is grab the modifier panel. I'm going to go to add modifier. Then I'm going to add a line art modifier. I'm going to change the source type from collection to object. I'm going to change the target layer to lines and I'm going to change the target material to white. Now what I'm going to do is select this object here, which is called station ring two. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And you can see here that we're getting kind of lines drawn all over our station. So now we're going to go ahead and make the station blue. So what I'm going to do is grab the station so you can see that we actually have a lot of materials here by default and we're going to delete those. But to prevent lag, what we're going to do is come back here to the modifier for the stroke. We're going to twirl this up and we're just going to turn that off in the viewport for now so we can kind of focus without that having to update. So let's go ahead and just delete these materials here and we're going to reduce this down to one material. So we're going to add a new material slot there. We're going to click here and I'm just going to call this blue. Now we're going to use an emission shader so we can grab this principal BDSF here and we can come down to emission. Then after that, all we need to do is grab this color here and move this up to a shade of blue that kind of looks more like a blueprint blue, which I'm going to use that right there. So now that we have the blue color selected, what I'm gonna do is hit control C over that color with my mouse over that and then I'll allow me to come over here to the world tab and hit control V and what that will do is paste that color in there. So now if we go over to render mode, we'll see that we don't see anything because our emission color and world color are the same. So let's come down here to the stroke and we're gonna go ahead and turn that back on in the viewport. And once I deselect that, we can see that we're getting a blueprint look. But let's go ahead and make sure that we add a white grid to the background and then also kind of add text. So we can actually add text pretty simply, but one thing I wanna show is that as you're moving lights around or adjusting, you may notice that your colors here aren't white. And that's because your strokes may be set to accept light. So if you come up here to the stroke, come down here to the stroke materials and we click white there, you can see that we have like all these various options here. And if we come up to this little object data properties here, we have this use light. So let's go ahead and click turn off use lights. And you can see that turning that off allows just the stroke color to come through without any pollution from the lights. So adding text is really easy. All you do is hit shift A and add in text. And then you can go ahead and just type out in edit mode some kind of random numbers and insert those around if you want that to kind of look like I have it in the thumbnail. So I'm gonna go ahead on my text here, add a new material, change this again to an emission material, leave that at white, and then I'm just gonna move that around and kind of scale that around. And I'm just gonna do that a couple times to kind of make it look like I have kind of random numbers and stuff for a blueprint. Great, so after that we kind of have some random text around. If you want, you could go ahead and add like a grease pencil line or two to kind of have lines pointing to particular objects, but I'm just gonna go ahead and move on here. So next we're gonna be creating the grid pattern in the back. So if we go to Shift A and we add a plane, and we're gonna just go ahead and scale this just way up, and then we're going to tab into edit mode here, and you might wanna switch into solid view so that you can kind of save yourself some rendering time. Then after that, we're just gonna right click this and we're just going to subdivide this. And then we have this little twirl down menu here. So if we go ahead and grab that, we're gonna turn this up really high. So let's go ahead and drag this. And that's kind of our grid size there, maxed by the drag value, but I want that to be a little bit higher. Let's try 25. And that looks like a good grid size to me. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go back to object mode and I'm going to render this view here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a modifier to here, and we're going to add a wireframe modifier, and we're gonna go ahead and turn that thickness way down so that we get kind of some thin 
lines there. And then what we're going to do is add again a material here. So let's just go ahead and add the white emission material that we already have on the other one. So let's go ahead and click that there. And you can see that now we kind of have a material to put behind our spaceship. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the spaceship effect back on for me. So let's go ahead, grab that modifier for the stroke and turn that back on. Once it's reappeared, we can see that that's kind of way below. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab this, grab the little move tool and then just move that below it. Go back up to the camera view and kind of scale this up until it fills out the background there. Now you'll notice that it's kind of hard to decipher the two. So the way I got around that is I actually kind of created an alternate version of this material. And then what I did is I grabbed the blue background color and then I just brought that all the way up and kind of brought it closer to white and that kind of gave it almost a faded look kind of matching in between there, which allowed the uh, grid to pop off more. So there you can see we can have more of a blueprint look, even better there if we go ahead and turn off all the gizmos so that we can get an easier view. I'm gonna go ahead here and toggle off kind of the viewport gizmo so we can see our blueprint look. Now, if you want to see more of the effects you can do here with the line art and everything and all the different options we have there, you can go ahead and watch that tutorial at the link in the description, which will walk you through how to use this line art modifier in depth. Thank you for watching. And as usual, tag me at Southern Shoddy on Instagram, where you can follow me and share your artwork as well to keep up to date with everything I'm coming out with. And I love seeing what you create from these tutorials. I hope you have a great rest of your day.